Hello everyone. Welcome you all to the part 2 of Lightroom mobile tutorial series. This is the part 2 of the series. In the last part we talked about the need of such videos and also we talked about the interface of Lightroom mobile application as well as we talked about some of the basic image organization tools that are available in Lightroom. So please watch the part 1 of the series before going into this video. I am Omkar and welcome you all to my channel OTP Photography. If you are interested in photography and photo editing related stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. In this part of the Master Lightroom mobile tutorial series, we will talk about light tab. As shown in the last video, this light tab has 6 basic settings that we can change. Are the exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. These are the things that we will look in today's video and the timestamp for the same are present in the description. So if you want to navigate around them, you can do that. So these settings are basically under light tab. So obviously as the name suggests, these settings will affect the light that is the brightness of an image in some way. So to edit any image, we need to look at two different aspects of image. First one is the brightness and second one is the color. In this video, we will be looking at the brightness aspect and the next video will be on color. First here we will talk about the representation of brightness information in any pixel. Any image is basically a collection of pixels and the word pixel is derived from the two words which are pixel element. Therefore the pixel is the fundamental block of any image. Every pixel has its own color and corresponding to that color it has a certain brightness or luminance value. In any image the maximum brightness level that pixel can have refers to the white color, the pure white color. The lowest brightness that it can achieve is the black color basically. Most of the images that we see uh, on internet or in from our phone are basically 8-bit images. And in any general 8-bit image, we have 256 level of intensities of brightness. The brightness intensity goes from 0 to 255, That those are the 256 levels. In this 0 refers to the black color and 255 refers to the white color and in between we have other gray color. For ease of understanding, we use percentage grayness scale where 0% gray is basically black and 100% gray is white. Now general photos that we see are color images and to understand the brightness concept in those images we can reduce the saturation to zero to turn them into a black and white image. In any black and white image the pixel color is basically gray with different amount of intensities. It can be 0% gray that is black color or 100% gray that is white color or it can range from anywhere in between. Okay, Now that we have understood how the brightness is represented in a pixel. Uh, now we can move on to the actual editing part and I can show you how these six sliders affect the brightness of the pixels. So guys we are in the Photoshop application here. I am using Photoshop as it is easier to explain here. At the end of video we will be editing some photos in Lightroom application on mobile so that you can understand the use of each and every slider on practical images. We will be using this image uh, where the brightness is gradually increasing from complete black. So this part is complete black and the brightness is gradually increasing to complete white. The brightness of this segments are increasing in 5%. Basically this is uh, this is 5% gray, this is 10%, this is 15 and so on. Somewhere here we have 50% and then here 95 and then 100% which is basically the white color. So I am using this image to illustrate the sliders because in this image we have distinct areas with different levels of brightness you will understand the basics of how those sliders works so we will go into the adobe camera raw filter so we are in the adobe camera raw this is basically the same interface as lightroom and it gives us control over all the settings that we have in the lightroom and today we are only concerned with these six sliders on the right as you can see here the exposure contrast highlights shadows whites and blacks so first let's look at the exposure part the exposure is basically the brightness of the image. It is very easy to understand. So if I increase the exposure here, as you can see, it is increasing the brightness of the image. But please note that it doesn't affect the pure black color, which is the our leftmost part of the... If I decrease the exposure, it is decreasing the brightness and increasing the brightness. So the exposure slider affects the brightness of the whole image, except the pure black colors. So exposure is pretty simple to understand. We will just go to the contrast slider. Now contrast is really important to understand. Now, if we look at the word contrast, the English word contrast, it basically means the difference. The contrast in photographic terms refers to the difference between bright and the dark part of the image. This is basically the bright and the dark part of the image. Now, whenever we increase the contrast, that is basically we are increasing the difference between bright and dark pixels. 
so when we increase the contrast the brighter pixels will get brighter and the darker pixel will get darker so in this particular image this right portion of the image this part of the image is basically relatively brighter part of the image that is it has brightness of around 75 percent and more and this is the relatively darker part of the image that is basically around 0 to 30 percent of grayness somewhere around that range it is not exact values but uh, just for the illustration purposes i am using these values so here as you can see if i increase the contrast the brighter part of the image are getting brighter and the darker part of the image is getting darker so this layer is basically a 50 percent gray layer anything with brightness above 50 percent gray is uh, getting brighter and anything below 50 percent gray is getting darker when we increase the contrast now when we reduce the contrast the brighter pixels will get darker and the darker pixels will get brighter that is the image will be more dull looking now the contrast slider helps us to uh, make use of the complete tonal space now what is tonal space tonal space is nothing but the complete brightness spectrum uh, that is basically ranging from complete black to complete white we are using the complete tonal space in this image as we have all the brightness levels in this We'll use this image to illustrate the use of tonal space. So in this image, we have brightness level ranging from 30% to 80%. Okay, so as you can see, this, this part is not completely black and this part is not completely white. So let's see what happens when we increase the contrast here. So I'll just disable this layer and I'll add one brightness and contrast layer. As you can see, we have a contrast slider here. So if I increase the contrast, so here this part has become brighter and this part has become darker than what it was originally but it has not really used the complete tonal space this is not completely white and this is not completely black so now to add more contrast i'll add another layer of brightness and contrast here and i'll increase the contrast even more you can see that this is completely become white and this has almost become black not completely black but it is almost black and and it is using the complete brightness spectrum that is complete tonal space so from this image you can see that the increasing contrast helps us bring that punch in the image i'll just show you a before and after so this was before and this is after so understanding contrast is really important i hope you all understood with this explanation now moving on to the highlight slide now highlights refers to the relatively brighter part of the image as we saw earlier this part of the image which is around 75 percent and more amount of brightness the highlight slider give us ability to control brightness of this relatively brighter part of the image so as you can see if i increase the highlights that is basically we are increasing the brightness of already brighter part of the image that is 75 percent and more and if i decrease the highlights it is affecting the brightness of that part again see how it affects the brightness of only the brighter part and not at all affecting the rest of the image okay and now let's move on to the shadow slider similar to highlights now highlights affected the relatively brighter part now the shadows will affect the brightness of relatively darker part that is this region around 0 to 30 percent of the brightness so if i increase the shadows you can see that the brightness of only the left hand side is increasing except the black color only and the shadows if you decrease the shadows it is decreasing the brightness of only the left hand side so that's why we use this image where we have clear segregation between the bright and the dark part of the image so that we can see the difference between these sliders i hope you understand the highlights and shadows i'll just repeat it once again highlights give us ability to control the brightness of brighter part of the image and shadows give us ability to control the brightness of darker part of the image now let's move on to the white slider so white slider determine what we call as the white point of the image so if i increase the whites here see uh, how it is affect see how it has affected only the brightest part of the image and it is setting up the white point of the image so as you can see this complete range this complete portion has become white and in result it has affected the whole image and not just the brighter part the center part and the left part are slightly getting affected and that was not the case with the highlights highlights was only affecting the brighter part but the white slider will set white point and in result it will affect the whole image now let's move on to the black slider similar to the whites black slider will determine the black point of the image and it will again affect the whole image in some way but mostly it will affect the darkest part of the image so if I reduce the black slider, 
it is doing exactly the same which uh, white slider did to the brighter part of the image it is making everything darker it is setting up the black point and if i increase the blacks here you can see that it is slightly affecting the brighter part of the image as well so now the difference between highlights and whites and the difference between shadows and blacks is slightly trickier to understand it is basically the range of brightness it is affecting but to better understand that i'll just use the previous image now in this image where we have the brightness level from 30% to 80% if i increase the highlights here as you can see it is barely affecting this image as we saw it only affects the brightness value more than 75% so only the last two sliders are slightly getting affected. But see what happens when I increase the white slider. See, uh, it, it is setting the white point here and in result it is affecting the brightness of the whole image. So that is the main difference between the highlights and whites. And the similar difference is there between shadows and blacks. If I decrease the shadows here, you can see it is barely affecting the image again because it affects only 0 to 30-35% of the brightness part and uh, if I make it 0 again and decrease the black slider see how it sets up the black point and in result it will again affect the whole image I hope you understand the point that I am trying to make here if you are really interested and want to know more technical difference between these sliders, I'll link up some articles in the description, you can check them out. Now we are done with the explanation of all these sliders, I hope you understood all these 6 sliders. Now we'll go into the Lightroom application and we'll edit some photos and see the real world application of these 6 sliders. So we are in the Lightroom mobile application here and these are the two photos that we'll be editing. So today we will just uh, use the light tab and fix the brightness of these images and later in the subsequent part we will use the same images and add those extra effect as we learn about them. So let's talk about this first image. I'll just we talked about all of these settings. If you haven't understand them please go back and watch the video and come again. Okay the first slider is exposure but what I do is I don't generally touch the exposure slider at the first because you know whenever you take a photo from your phone or camera unless you are specifically under exposing the image that you can do it in DSLR camera but if you are a mobile photographer and using the auto mode of the camera the camera will generally take the photo with a good amount of exposure so what I'll recommend you is don't touch the exposure slider at the start I'll just start with the contrast slider as this is a dull looking image as you can see there are a lot of grey sky in the image so I'll increase the contrast here I'll just keep it somewhere around 40 yeah this is looking good one more tip that I can give is if you want to reset any of this slider let's say if I increase the contrast you if I double tap on this circle it will just go and reset itself to zero so I'll increase the contrast yeah that much looks fine now there are blown out highlights on the left hand side so I'll decrease the highlights as you can see it can bring out the details back in the skies so i'll reduce this highlights completely okay from the shadows okay so shadow about 60 looks good there are a lot more whites in the image on the left hand side so i'll try to decrease the whites you see how how it is affecting the image it is making the sky more and more dark i feel slightly reduced blacks are looking good in my opinion so what you need to do, you shouldn't make your mind whether you need to increase highlights or decrease highlights or you need to increase whites or decrease whites. Let's take examples of uh, this white slider. What you can do is you just try increasing and reducing both. Maybe in some cases you will want some kind of effect in your image or maybe you will want this. So based upon what you want and what you are trying to do and just try and play around the settings. Don't just assume that you need to decrease the whites or you need to increase the shadows in all the cases so let's for example if you reduce the shadows maybe this is the effect that you are looking for just then go for it but uh, in this particular case i like to have shadows around 55 60 somewhere whites reduced around like 70 to 80 or maybe you can go all the way down with it and with the black slider as you can see it is just affecting those darker parts of the trees it is bringing more contrast in those areas so contra blacks around minus 16 minus 15 it, it is looking good so i'll show you the before and the after 
you see there is a massive difference just with the light tag now let's move on to the second image this is also another image taken from my phone again i will not touch the exposure slider at the start so for this particular image i can think of two different ways you can edit the image we'll just go for the first one now what i'll do is here you can see the parts where the houses are on the lower part of the image there are a lot of shadows that is the dark part of the image and i want some details in that so i'll just increase the shadows there is sufficient amount of brightness in the shadows so around 60 looks good decrease the highlights so that as you can see if i decrease the highlights it is bringing the details back where the clouds are near the sun so you shouldn't go completely all the way down because sun has certain amount of brightness and it it should look natural i'll probably keep it around 50 now we'll work around the white slide Again, as I said earlier, you shouldn't fix uh, some rules by yourself whether you need to increase or decrease what. Let's just play and just try increasing and decreasing also. So I feel that decreasing it is slight. Uh, it, it is making a subtle difference in the brightness of the image. So it looks good. And again on the black parts, it, it can bring out the contrast in the shadow region. There are a lot of windows in these houses. Those are completely black. And if I decrease the black slightly, those completely black part of the image are getting darker. So slight reduction in blacks is looking good in my opinion. And now I'll just uh, touch the contrast slider and see how it looks if I increase the contrast. So if I increase the contrast too much, as you can see, it is also affecting color saturation of the image. And also it is decreasing the brightness of the lower part of the image. So maybe somewhere around like 12, 15, it is looking good. Now at the end, just touch the exposure slider and see if it is making any substantial difference if you want it. No, I'll preferably keep at zero. So this is looking nice. This is before and this is after. We made some subtle differences. We just brought out uh, details in the shadows and brought out details in the some of the highlights near the sun. Now, another way of editing this image is to create a skyline, to create a silhouette of this image. For that, I'll just reset all the settings here once. You can double tap on the settings and it will reset it automatically. Here, in this case, I'll reduce the shadows completely reduce the shadows and reduce blacks i don't want any details in the skyline as you can see it is creating this nice silhouette of the skyline of all those buildings now i can increase the exposure just a little bit so that there is enough brightness in the sky area and now slightly decrease highlights to get those details back in the sun region and try increasing contrast a little bit yeah, a slight increase in contrast is looking nice. This is before and this is after. This is another type of edit that you can do with your images. Now remember, this is a silhouette image. Uh, silhouettes are basically shadows of objects which are in front of a strong backlight. So make sure you don't reduce the highlights too much in this case because that will look unnatural. Have a good amount of highlights. The brightness of the highlights should be good enough so that that shadow, the silhouettes can be justified. We edited two images. This is the before after and this is again the bad before and after. I hope you understand all the basic concepts from the light tab very clearly. And we also saw a few examples on how you can edit uh, practical images. In the next part, we'll look at the color tab. I'll explain all those sliders in the similar way. And later, we'll edit those same photos again and uh, make some changes to those photos. And we'll see how we can make them look better. If you learned something new, make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button. Please share this video with your photography enthusiastic friends. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.